Howdy partners and welcome to the Windy City of Chicago. Coming to you here from inside of the heart of Grant Park right next to downtown with a guide on six things that you need to know before you come visit Chicago, uh, which is a city I highly recommend. Getting right into it, the first thing that you need to know is where to stay when you come visit Chicago. And honestly, it depends a little bit on personal preference. We got a few options for you. First and foremost, right here, right next to Grant Park, you can stay literally in a high rise right behind me, right? And you'll get access to this beautiful park, access to the bay and the harbor that's just over yonder. You'll get access to a lot of the main amenities that people like to see whenever they come to Chicago. You're talking about the Bean, of course. You're talking about the Chicago Institute of Art, right? You're talking about your aquariums, planetariums, all right here, right in this section. You have close access just over to the west side, right, to Chinatown. And just to talk about that super briefly is one I really highly recommend. It's probably the most open and inclusive Chinatown that I've been to. I know that my wife and I really enjoyed it. You're kind of in between that Chinatown section over to the west side and to your traditional downtown, which is going more north along the river, right? And then across the Chicago River as well. You have that option to stay in downtown Chicago, which is a little bit further north, right? But if you're in the heart of downtown Chicago, you're gonna be right there in the shopping district. I know some people really enjoy that. Very much a traditional downtown. Lots of food options, lots of places to go, all walking distance. And you're still very close to those main attractions that people like to see some of the things that folks want to check out whenever they're coming here. Like I said before, the feed, the Chicago Institute of Art, etc. right? You're gonna be within walking distance of that if you're in the heart of main downtown Chicago, but also you have access to a little bit closer to the north northern part of downtown, your Lincoln Park Zoo. You'll be within a little good walk, but you know, you're closer to that than if you're on the Grant Park side. It's a little bit more hustle and bustle, a little bit more like a traditional ground downtown as opposed to Grant Park side is a little bit more serene right it's a little bit more it feels like just normal chicagans uh going about their day here in the traditional downtown side so it it looks really good uh it's i highly recommend it if you're here in the summer guys go a little bit further north to the northern part of your downtown chicago and you're going to actually have beach access because chicago is you know you can't tell right here it is on the and now we're inside. <laughs> uh, it started to rain, which is another thing you always need to know whenever you're going somewhere is, of course, the weather, especially when it's only 46 degrees outside. But to continue, um, there's all these places that you can stay. Choose the one that's going to work best for you. There are many good locations for getting into some of those places that you want to see and definitely not miss when you're here in Chicago. Which brings us into the number two thing you need to know when you come to Chicago which is how to get around Chicago, right? First and foremost, the L train, CTE transportation. It is not that scary. I know that it has a little bit of a perception around it, but using it has made it super simple to get around the city, take you from the airport straight to downtown. We're gonna use the same thing going back. Um, it's just like any other major city's public transportation option really really good and it is relatively inexpensive as well i highly recommend it felt very clean on the cte on the l train in particular and very safe as well so i couldn't recommend that more you obviously as well have bikes here i have not been to a city in north america with as many bike options as you have here in chicago the city's obviously partnered with lyft to some degree to have bike racks probably in every single city block, right? That you can, with your app, just hop on, boom, scan it. you got a bike, you're going around. I know biking's not for everyone. Uh, for my wife, she loves it. For myself, I'm okay with it, right? But you do get around the city super quickly whenever you don't really want to just walk from point A to point B. That said, you also do have that option of walking around. It is extremely walkable all through, especially this downtown area, um, really, really good. So it's super simple to get around. If you're like me, you'll be logging 20,000 plus steps a day because you know I love to walk a city to get to know it. But uh, that option is definitely there for you as well. Which brings me really nicely into the third thing that you need to know. And this is something that was really impactful to me whenever I, after about the second day, 
uh, I was here in Chicago was just how many open areas there is here in the city. It's really incredible like to be in a downtown area and have so much open public air, public space, right? I mean, to go down, you, like you have Grant Park, rolls into Millennium Park, rolls into some smaller parks downtown. You have beaches on the north side of downtown. You have the entire uh, seaboard walkway, which is 18 miles long of walking and running space on the seaboard. It's all meticulously uh, crafted and landscaped. I mean, I've never seen so many flowering trees in my life. It's absolutely incredible to look at and to view and just be like around. Feels magic outside, guys. Couldn't recommend spending more time walking around, biking around, whatever it takes to spend time outside. Make sure you're not just like hopping in an Uber to go from point A to point B if it's at all possible. Because even in the downtown area, the landscaping is fantastic with beautiful tulip beds coming up everywhere and trees lining the whole downtown. It's really, really tasteful. It's really nice to spend some time outside. It's not too hot here in Chicago for most of the year as well, which is something we deal with a little bit more in the South, which might make you not want to be outside as much. But here, it's really nice, beautiful weather. Normally, don't pay attention. It's uh, not raining all the time. Just caught us out this once. Uh, other than that, you know, we've been in the 50 to 70 degree range here in April, of course. Uh, so it's been really, really nice and a great place to spend some time outdoors, whether that's on, you know, a little picnic or it's just walking around or biking. Couldn't possibly recommend it more, guys. Make sure to spend some time outside, taking in the sights, the beautiful landscaping and the general location of where Chicago is. And with that said, know that when you come here to Chicago, it is definitely an arts center for the U.S., right? And there's a few things that you want to make sure you don't miss whenever you come. First and foremost, I know everybody loves to go see the bean. It shocked me that it's actually called the cloud, apparently. I've never heard that in my life. We're gonna keep calling it the bean while we're here. Uh, it's really nice. It's more than I thought it was gonna be before coming in. It's a lot bigger and it's a really great outdoor space that it's kept in as well over in Millennium Park. So definitely recommend that. There's some other outdoor art pieces around that, which I highly recommend too. So make sure to spend some time in that area. The Chicago Institute of Art has got to be the big draw and selling point of Chicago as being part of an art district. You can see a couple of the most famous American paintings of all time there. Things like American Gothic are housed uh, in the Chicago Institute of Art and paintings like Nighthawks. Among many, many other famous artists, Van Gogh is there, Picasso is there. You won't regret going in and spending some time in the Institute of Art. It's absolutely fantastic. Make sure, especially if you have little ones, to go over to the field house, right? And check that out as well. It's, it was a really good experience. I mean, it's more than just Sue and, you know, the T-Rex that you can have there. It's got other things. Um, Women and Warriors was a great display. I know it was a temporary one that they had and they have a lot of great stuff for kids there as well. And a lot of stuff about the history and how America came into being. So I couldn't possibly recommend it more. And with that said, under normal times as well, you'll have quite a few plays going on here in the city and the Broadway theater is very robust, probably one of the most so outside of New York City, of course. And then while you're walking around and enjoying some of those outdoor spaces that we talked about earlier, definitely take in some of the wall art here. There's some fabulous wall art going all through the city. I mean, there's tall buildings, so you're bound to have some of it, but it looks really, really good and really tasteful. And a lot of it conveys a social cause kind of messaging as well, which I think is a really nice touch. And that brings us really nicely to the number five thing I want to talk about, what you need to know before you come to Chicago. And this isn't something I talk about very often. I don't think I've actually spoken about it in any other videos, but is the city pass, guys. Uh, the city pass here was just absolutely full of value for me. Um, it was about $100 a person. And if you add up these places that you want to go to, it'll probably save you about 50% on your cost. Um, it includes things like the Chicago Institute of Art, which I think is a can't miss. It includes things like the Field House, like the Chicago Aquarium, which is something my wife and I always love going to and checking out aquariums everywhere we go. And that was a really cool one because it had a really great message around conservation and reintroducing um, wildlife to their natural habitat and helping to salvage and save endangered species there. So it was a really great view and experience has things on it like the planetarium whenever it's open. And then of course, my favorite, which I want to touch on a little bit, which is the Chicago Sky Deck that is in the Willis Tower, if you're going to search it in your Google or Apple Maps. 
but more formally known to most of us as the Sears Tower. And it was the largest uh, skyscraper in the world up until I want to say the late 1990s, right when it finally got passed. So it had quite a few, uh, quite a while that it was at the top. So it's uh, absolutely beautiful to go to. Um, it's not just like your traditional, like if you've been to the Space Needle in Seattle, where you just go up, look around, and come back down. It was a whole immersive experience, which was really, really cool. You go in after getting your ticket, and it gives you the whole history of Chicago. Things like the Chicago fire that happened, how the city was rebuilt, the architectural uh, masterpieces here in the city and how that happened and with all of the skyscrapers that you're looking at and the beautiful skyline behind me um, and up and down downtown Chicago is really unique. And then of course, uh, how the Willis and Sears Tower came into being. Then you go up to the top, it's a tremendously fast elevator ride, <laughs> so be ready for that. Uh, and you get this incredible view of the city. I recommend going around 7 p.m. so you can catch the sunset, right, as it's coming down. And make sure to uh, get yourself ready to do the ledge experience while you're up there. Whenever you come out over the ledge onto just glass, right, so you can look all the way down over a, a thousand feet up in the air uh, and seeing the entire skyline from that perspective was really, really cool as well. Couldn't recommend it more. And I couldn't recommend the City Pass more. It'll give you a little cost savings. And to me, pretty much everything on there was stuff that I wanted to do anyway. So it really worked out. And the final and six things that I want to talk to you all about about Chicago is the overall uniqueness of the city. Um, it's really a special place. I've really enjoyed being here. There's a few things that I think are so cool. I definitely touched on Chinatown earlier. Couldn't talk about it enough. And it's dumplings and it's sushi bars that are automated with little robots. but. More so than that, it was just so open and welcoming. Everybody there was so kind and excited to kind of like have you inside of the Chinatown, which I thought was really cool. It has its own individual park, which is absolutely beautiful as well. Definitely recommend spending some time there. The people of Chicago are absolutely fantastic as well. Um, there's not like an outsiderness to it. I know that we're just getting back into visiting the city as everybody's getting vaccinated, right? And we're continuing to move on in the new COVID world, but everybody's super excited to have us here. It had a great positive energy about us. Um, the location of it is so robust here in the, in the Midwest on the lake. It kind of has everything you could imagine. Beaches, outdoor areas, giant downtown, robust skyscrapers, architecture, the arts, is an absolutely incredible place to go and stay. I highly recommend it, and I definitely don't miss the food, folks, while you're here. Definitely get you a deep dish pizza, a Chicago dog. Make sure you're getting it from one of those street side vendors as well. That's the best way to do it and the best way to support the local community. Make sure not to miss that, along with every other food option you can look for in a major downtown metropolitan area. So you can't possibly miss, you're gonna have a great time here in Chicago. Make sure to take it, put it on your bucket list, put it on your next few trips, because you won't regret it. You're gonna enjoy every minute that you have here and it's gonna be action packed and full of stuff. With that said, if you're liking what you're seeing, always help us out. Hit that like button, right? Appease the algorithm God. And give us a subscribe if you wanna get up to date on more honest travel guides. Right, we'll catch you on the next one, partners.